Now that you have a deeper understanding of why our bodies need light and what wavelengths are most vital, we can talk about how science has helped us to harness these light waves for the betterment of our health. As noted in Chapter 1, RLT is short for red light therapy. This is the common name, whereas photobiomodulation is the official scientific name. And if you choose to do your own research, I recommend using the term photobiomodulation instead of red light therapy, as it'll result in less advertising and more actual data. PubMed.gov is one of the best sources to locate research on photobiomodulation. To reiterate, contrary to the name, red isn't the only color, but it is the most prominent and abundant. Most devices, however, have both red and near-infrared, and as near-infrared is invisible to the naked eye, red by default becomes the dominant color and thus red light therapy. As we can see again, there are other colors or wavelengths that create a cellular response beyond just red. The other colors may work somewhat differently than red and somewhat differently than near infrared, but that's for a different discussion. As a quick example though, blue is excellent for acne because it creates reactive oxygen species that can disassemble or kill the acne causing bacteria. Wavelength has the greatest effect on penetration. Here we can see how different wavelengths penetrate at different levels. This is because the wavelengths have chromophores, or basically they have certain cells and atoms which absorb them. These are melanin, hemoglobin, oxygenated hemoglobin, and water. Wavelengths have different absorption levels in all of these. Blue penetrates very little because its main chromophore is melanin found on the top layer of the skin. Red penetrates deeper as it is less absorbed by melanin but rather by hemoglobin, the blood just under the skin. Near infrared penetrates even further as its chromophore is less melanin and less blood. There's a quite a bit more to this, but this just gives you a general understanding. Key is that wavelength is the most important factor in determining penetration. So what exactly is meant by light wavelengths? Every color in the spectrum, as well as invisible light, has a range of wavelengths. Those wavelengths are measured in nanometers, meaning a billionth of a meter. Really, really small. Wavelengths have high peaks and low peaks. The measurement from the top of one peak to the top of the next peak is done in nanometers, and this tells us the wavelength. For example, the range of blue is approximately 400 nanometers to 500 nanometers. Below 400 is the ultraviolet range, and just above 500 is the green range. Red is 600 to 700 nanometers. Near infrared ranges from approximately 700 to 1200 nanometers. Now we briefly touched on this in chapter one, hormesis. It's a natural phenomenon that occurs when a stressor is introduced to a subject or environment, producing a stimulating and beneficial effect within the subject. In the case of light, it's essentially a state of intermittent stress caused by the light waves that helps our cells to become stronger and more fortified. Hormesis occurs not just with light. Exercise is a perfect example of hormesis. If you were out of shape and decided to run a marathon, how do you think you'd feel? You'd likely not finish, or if you did, you'd be in extreme discomfort for days. But if you started slow and trained and built up the miles, your body would be more prepared to handle the physical stress of a marathon. In this diagram, you see mild stress, meaning not running a marathon cold. This creates the cellular response, which strengthens the cells and makes them more resistant to damage, whereas intense stress running the marathon, or even no stress, never getting off the couch, can lead to cellular damage and death. But intense stress, when slowly built up with consistent mild stress, can lead to increased stress resistance and cell survival. So, get out there today, just do one mile. A similar effect of hormesis occurs with saunas. 20-year studies have shown significant improvements in health and longevity from daily and weekly use. 
In the case of infrared saunas, we're using far infrared wavelengths that penetrate deep into the body, creating heat and thus detoxifying sweat. Again, if you did too much too quickly, your body would not be prepared. Cold plunges have a similar hormesis effect, as does fasting. So hormesis through light therapy, as well as exercise, saunas, cold plunges, and fasting triggers a chain reaction that builds up our body's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant defense systems, which literally makes our cells more resistant to harm, more resilient, and actually makes our cells live longer and healthier. In this chapter, we discussed that red is but one of the colors in wavelengths with benefits. And we discussed how wavelengths penetrate depending on the chromophore and how light creates a hormesis effect that helps our cells become more resilient.